If you're not using parameters in Fusion 360, you're missing out a lot. With them you can quickly resize your model and see the changes happening in real time. And all you'll be doing is changing dimensions in a table. It works like this. Go to Modify, Change Parameters. Here you can create new parameter and assign it a value. You can then use this parameter whenever you're defining dimensions in a sketch or when you're using tools like Extrude or Chamfer. And you can even do basic math with them. For example, you can define that an edge should be thickness times 2 long. Well, that was the quick summary. Now let's take a closer look at it. Inputting dimensions directly in sketches and features works fine if you're designing something from scratch. And the part doesn't really have to fit with any existing objects. But that's very often not the case, right? Mechanical parts usually need to fit perfectly with other parts. And sometimes you might even want the part to fit with various different sizes or types of objects. Say a wall mounted holder for an aluminum LED profile. You don't want to redraw it from scratch every time you buy a slightly different one. Or this self watering insert for a flower pot. Ideally, you'd like to be able to quickly resize it to whatever size your pot is. This is where parametric modeling excels. Again, you'll find it under Modify, Change Parameters. If you have experience with any kind of programming, these are basically variables. You can then use these variables whenever you're defining dimensions. If you then later on want to resize your model, instead of painfully changing the dimensions everywhere manually, you can simply open the parameters window, change the values here, and see the model updating in real time. It's really cool. Let's take a look at the example with the self-watering insert and actually try to modify it for a different sized pot. First, I've modeled this without the use of parameters, just like you're probably used to modeling. So how do I change the size in this case? Your first option is to simply rescale the exported STL in the slicer. This will work if the size difference is fairly small because you'll also be scaling all tolerances and the wall thickness. So at some point, parts of the model will be either too small to be printable, or if you scale it up, way too thick and tolerances too loose. There is only so much you can do with simple scaling. What if the pod has a bigger difference between the top and bottom diameter? Scaling isn't flexible enough for such case. The second option is editing the dimensions manually in Fusion 360. This sounds easy, but even this shape-wise relatively simple model has 18 sketches and dozens of steps in the design history timeline. Let's try changing some of the dimensions, for example the height of the pod. I've started modeling this with a cylinder, so let's double click it. And now we can change the height, so let's change it from 100, 140mm to let's say 120mm, make it slightly less tall. I will confirm it. And now Fusion 360 recalculated the rest of the model and it got very broken. If you're using Fusion 360, I'm sure you're familiar with this. Basically, uh, the future modifications are referencing part of the model that is no longer valid, so it's either showing warnings in yellow or straight up errors with red. So let's start with the first problem. And we see that it's a chamfer. And the problem is pretty obvious. It's trying to do chamfer 140mm tall, but this is now only 120mm tall. So if we change that, it will recalculate it again. And it's better, still kind of broken. So let's take the timeline and see when does it get filled from top. So it seems that it's this extrude. So let's double click it. And 
if we turn on sketches, we can disable this. So now that's better, it's way less broken. Let's go forward. Okay, this got filled at some time, but it really uh, shouldn't be filled. If we click it, we can see that it's this extrude. Again, we can just cancel it. And let's go forward. This is almost fixed. Uh, this is still uh, strange. Okay, and it's this extrude. So... Again, we can just change what is supposed to be extruded. And yeah, with some work, uh, we could, let's say, in a reasonable amount of time, fix this. This is, again, still too tall, and it's going to be the same problem that this is 140 millimeters tall, rather than 120. And whenever you want to make a uh, change to the size of the pot, you will have to do this over and over again. And it will keep breaking maybe in slightly different places and you will have to, you know, try and find where it got broken and try to fix this. So this is not ideal if you want to, you know, reuse this model many times for different sizes of pots. So let's try modeling it at least the first few steps again. But this time let's use parameters. In this case, before we start modeling anything, we will set the parameters. So let's go to modify, change parameters. And let's define some values. Uh, first of all, the height, which will be 140 millimeters. Then we can do uh, upper diameter, and that will be 160 millimeters. And lastly, let's define bottom diameter and that will be 130 millimeters these are values that you would uh, measure uh, in real life just you know to match an existing pot okay now there are multiple ways to to do the shape that we need i could do one circle offset a plane second circle and loft it but to better demonstrate how you can use math with the parameters, let's just use a simple cylinder. I will use the ground plane. And now when I'm defining the, uh, the diameter, let's, let's use the parameters that we set up. So this one, uh, I will use the upper diameter, kind of surprisingly. And then for the height, I will just type in height. Okay, and now to get the, the cone look, basically the, 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 the angled walls, we will use a chamfer that will be full height. So if you have this in equal distance, I'll just switch it to two distances. And then this one, that's pretty obvious, this one will be again height. And the other one will be the difference between the upper and uh, bottom diameter. So let's type in upper diameter minus bottom diameter. And it did it, but because those are diameters and the chamfer is applied from both sides, it's double what it should be. So we can add parentheses to the beginning and the end and divided by two and now this is the correct value so now if I go into change parameters I can put this to the side and if we had a different size spot I can very easily just you know make this taller make the upper diameter bigger for example and it will keep updating and it will match whatever we type here. So I think this is super cool. So if we were to continue, we could, for example, add wall thickness. And this could be very important because you might want to watch this to the number, to a perfect number of perimeters so that you have no gap fill. So right now, let's just, uh, let's just say that we want the wall thickness to be two millimeters and click okay. 
And now if we use the shell tool, we will just use wall thickness. Yep, and that's it. And if we were to keep just modeling this, whenever you think it's a value uh, that you might want to change in the future or that will be referenced multiple times, just always go into change parameters and add it here as a variable and then in the sketch just reference it. And this will make your models really way simpler to uh, update and to modify to different sizes. I've updated the whole model of camera to be parametric. So right now uh, I can basically change everything about the pot. For example, I can change the amount of water uh, it is able to store by changing the reservoir height. So I can make it smaller or I can increase it a lot if the plant needs a lot of water. Or I can make the whole pot taller or for example make the walls less angled uh, by changing the uh, difference between the top and bottom diameter. By the way, in this model I've used one more pretty nifty trick and that's, you can see that this is full even though those are the hole, holes for filling the water and this is where the uh, water uh, level meter will be. Uh, if we go into slicer, uh, this overhang would need supports and this would basically be full of supports straight from the build plate. So that's a lot of supports. So instead, uh, I've added a really thin wall, just one layer thick. So now when the printer is printing it, it can use bridging to go over the, over the hole. So it can print this without any support and then it will print the geometry on top of it. And this will be really thin. So when this is finished, I can just use a scalpel and cut the, the plastic out. And I will waste so little plastic compared to uh, using support structure which would go all the way from the bolt plate. Parameters in Fusion are very similar uh, to how variables work in OpenSCAD or uh, in this example OpenJSCAD, a web version, where you also have uh, variables which if you change will basically propagate and change the way your model looks. But OpenSCAD isn't exactly user-friendly for everyone, so it's good to know that it's also sort of possible in Fusion 360. Hopefully you've learned something new. There are already quite a few uh, Fusion 360 tutorials, but still let us know if you'd like more uh, videos about it, specifically maybe about some tips and tricks about 3D printing. Oh and as always, happy printing!